Solidime's launching new SSDs, E3.S and U.2. The D7 PS1010 and the PS1030. The 1030 is higher write endurance. But more importantly, these are world record setting drives. The world's fastest PCIe Gen 5 drives? Well, there's a little more to the story than that. Let's take a closer look. So, if you recall, we did petabyte scale writing on the D7P5810. This is an ultra high endurance modern SLC, technically, because of the way that they use the flash media cells. And yeah, it held up its end of the bargain. But these drives, 15 gigabytes per second, they're pushing what are enthusiast class workloads, but into the enterprise. But they've also tweaked the firmware a lot to be able to better handle mixed workloads, including workloads that have a lot of read-write pressure. And usually you see the latency tank in that. Not in this case. So these drives are 3.1 million random read IOPS, 70% better performance per watt, 46% faster AI training speed. AI training speed? So that's one of those mixed workloads when you take it apart. When you look at what's going on when you're doing model training and the type of IOs that is, that is kind of a unique workload. And Solidime has put a lot of work into characterizing that workload and then building in software support in the controller in order to be able to do that. In fact, the hallmark of everything that is really innovative that's happening with this generation of NVMe across the enterprise space is making the controller on the drive very, very smart. This is what the Open Compute Consortium is basically demanding of their partners, and we'll talk about the Open Compute specific extensions to the NVMe standard that these drives incorporate, which that alone may be worth the price of admission. So what's the difference between the PS1030 and the PS1010? Well, the PS1030 is designed for more write endurance. So those are slightly smaller capacity drives. They're gonna be available in up to 12.8 terabyte capacities, whereas the PS1010, those are gonna be available in up to 15.36 terabytes. Basically the difference between one drive write per day and three drive writes per day endurance. But for a lot of enterprise workloads, even one drive write per day endurance is overkill. I would recommend as a functional minimum the seven terabyte drives because you really need seven the 7.68 terabyte drives and above in order to get the absolute maximum performance or at least my 3.84 terabyte drives were a little bit slower than their 7.68 terabyte counterparts. Now these are PCIe Gen 5, they are backward compatible with PCIe Gen 4. And if you've never seen the E3.S connector, it's basically this edge here. E3.S solves a lot of problems with U.2, one of which is that this is a backwards compatible SAS physical interface, serial attached SCSI. This is designed from the beginning for better electrical noise immunity and high speed signaling. So this should carry us well into PCIe Gen 6, but don't quote me on that. The other neat thing with this connector is that the E3 standard, at least for what we're working for on the open compute side of things, there are versions of this connector that can be larger, and so you can do up to 16 lanes in one of these. Another nice thing with E3.S, and you'd be surprised how important this is in the enterprise, is built-in indicators. You're not relying on the chassis to do that. It's up to the drive. That solves so many problems. You have no idea. Which drive out of our tens of thousands of drives in the storage pool is bad? That's not always a fun question to answer. Up to 3.1 million read IOPS, up to 400,000 write IOPS. That's with a queue depth of 256. And we're talking about 14,000 IOPS when we've got 128K sequential read. About 9,300 IOPS when we're talking about 128K sequential write. Now for the 4K random write, the PS1030, because that is a higher endurance drive and because they've arranged the flash medium a little differently, you can get up to 800,000 random write IOPS, which is quite an improvement. You may want the higher write performance depending on your workload even if you aren't approaching three drive writes per day and the flash media is 176 layer triple level cell triple level cell in the enterprise in these capacities it is very nice to see and that's how they're able to pull off the performance that they are with these now these are fully nvme 2.0 compliant that's nvme mi v1.2 the opal standard for encryption and security version 2.02 a lot of enterprises don't trust self-encrypting drives and that is a whole other conversation we could get off into the weeds about. 
This is something that open compute is driving and basically across a bunch of different vendors they want things reasonably standardized on the drives. They do want encryption at rest and they do want uh, a solid plan for dealing with enterprise encryption but also they like features like being able to decrypt the drives in case of a uh, horrible catastrophic failure or having to pull drives and you know reconstruct an array like I mean, think NVMe over fabric where you pull a malfunctioning drive and you do some magic to it and then you have to plug it back in somewhere else and transfer the data to a non-malfunctioning drive like is there a recovery scenario for that where you can recover the keys that's what some of the functionality that the open compute consortium wants to close the loop on so i get it secure boot and firmware signing have also been specified by open compute and so these drives are fully compliant there another big extension of the nvme standard is standardized latency monitoring you see the firmware on the drive can do a lot to hide the flash complexity from you which can lead to mm, let's call it inconsistent latencies when we're talking about writes or when we're talking about reads and it has to do a read retry or some type of reconstruction or something like that and so uh, the open compute consortium wants metrics and telemetry into how much the drive is struggling and so a lot of knobs and tunables have been added to that that is part of the new ocp nvme specification and these drives they have it in the controller Solidime is not bashful about comparing these to the competition. They they pit these against the Kyoxia CM7R, which we've taken a look at, and Samsung PM9D3A, which I have, but uh, the performance hasn't been great. So I haven't, you know, it seems like an older design. Samsung's a little more conservative. Pretty much across the board, these drives meet or beat the competition, and sometimes by a pretty significant margin. Solidime was also keen to show off the performance of these drives in several different benchmark categories, everything from email and bulk storage to database servers and even the uh, AeroSpike NoSQL database load. And the controller on these for something like an AeroSpike NoSQL type workload twice as fast. And that's just down to controller and software optimizations and looking at the workload and saying, ah, yes, I recognize this workload. Let's do some things a little differently. Solidime is also keen to talk about their performance metrics for AI type workloads. This is mixing object storage and GPU compute and object retrieval from the GPUs. This is a little harder to benchmark. I would really like for the software plumbing in things like direct storage to be a little bit more complete before I'm really able to comment on those aspects of it. It looks promising, but the enterprises that are using this kind of storage for these AI tasks are few and far between. This is not really a mainstream workload yet, but because these drives do so well in all rounder workloads and stuff that's a little more pedestrian that I'm able to have access to and comprehend, I feel like that for the AI workloads, they should be okay. Now for most of our workload testing, I tested on a mix of Linux and Windows. Our Windows workstation here is based on the ASRock WRX90 motherboard, which has mini cool edge IO connectors. And I was able to use those mini cool IO edge connectors along with a 150 centimeter MCIO to U.2 cable for most of our testing. And I did work at gen five speeds. So there were no WHEA or error corrected errors. I did have to set level three, the redriver strength in the BIOS to level three in order to have a solid connection, but it's a solid connection because it's solid on. For server testing, we used Supermicro chassis. We got an Emerald Rapids Supermicro cloud server, as well as a Supermicro Genoa-based server. These have lots of U.2 connectivity and it is Gen 5, and I'm happy to report that both of these chassis worked fine with the Solidime U.2 drives that I had, and I was able to carry out my testing in, 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 with both Windows Server and Linux. For the best performing distro for these types of tests, typically is clear Linux. It can also be uh, Fedora or Arch Linux, depending on one of the Arch Linux derivatives. Uh, depending on what your specific tests are. I've had some strange issues with uh, storage performance on Ubuntu lately, even 24.04 LTS. Just strange performance anomalies that I'm still investigating. So my usual test suite uh, that I like to run in just kind of a push button fashion didn't work. I needed to adapt it to the current version of Fedora and uh, I didn't quite get to that. So some of these tests I had to run manually, but hey, performance here, pretty solid. And the best news, these have entered general availability. I know sometimes when everybody's really excited about Gen 5 storage, it's like, okay, I'm ready to buy some Gen 5 storage. I got my nice new Gen 5 server based on, you know, Genoa or Sapphire Rapids or Emerald Rapids. Now I need my storage. Where's my storage? Well, these are entering mainstream availability now. So 
By the time you're watching this video, they should be available and you can build a little storage array with them, test them, order them from your favorite OEMs, a lot of fun times ahead. If you have any specific tests or workloads or something that I can run with an Ansible script or a Docker Compose file or something, and you want me to test it on the 7.68 terabyte PS1010 or 1030 drives that I have, hit me up at the forum at Level 1 Techs. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.